Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we are, chapter 7, last chapter in your pre-calc 12 course, ladies and gentlemen, pretty stoked, pretty stoked. So this is a section on what we call combinatrix, okay, it's uh, the way we group things together or how many different possible uh, patterns we can get, say with six letters, six numbers, uh, these are good for encryption, passwords, stuff like that, sort of tells you how strong your password is or uh, how encrypted something is. Um, number of choices, how many different license plates, how many different phone numbers can we have with the seven digit phone numbers that we have or the license plates that we have. So this is uh, where we deal with those types of data. And the, the most basic thing that we uh, look at in this section is what we call the fundamental counting principle. Okay. And it simply states that, um, well, here we go. If there are M possibilities for a for one event or object, so um, say that you have three numbers to choose from, or there's four different colors, or there's six people that in one, six people for, say, the mayor, and then there's 12 people for the treasurer, and then there's three people for the uh, media person, whatever. These events or objects, these are um, situations, right? So if you have three different uh, places, for something to go, then uh, the number of possibilities of those three things is simply multiplying them together, okay? And it um, needs to assume that all these events are independent. So whatever happens here doesn't affect the first one, and whatever happens here doesn't affect the, the one before it too, okay? So they have to be what we call independent events. Now, the only thing that we can look at are examples for this, okay? So say you're going out for breakfast and you've got uh, a bunch of different choices. They give you a bunch of choices for eggs, for toast, and for meat, right? So um, their first event or your first object can be considered the eggs, right? So for the first event, you have one, two, three possibilities, right? And then for the second event, you have one, two, three, four different breads. So we go times four and there's two choices for me. And so now we go 24 possible uh, arrangements or different types of breakfasts that you can get from those three items, right? Uh, basic example, let's look at another one. Um, multiple choice test. Say you had a multiple choice test. Okay, say it's out of 20. So let's say your test is out of 20 and there's four choices each. So you have 20 stages, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, whatever they are. And how many choices do you have for the first one, right? You got four choices, A, B, C, or D. And then you got four for the second one, and then four for the third one, and then four for the fourth one, and then four for the fifth one. So uh, hopefully you can see that that's going to be four times four, 20 times. So it's four to the power of 20. And if you go four to the power of 20, uh, you have an insane number, 12 uh, decimal places. So six is a million, uh, nine is a billion. This is a trillion different possible uh, ways that you can fill out a multiple choice test that has 20 questions, A, B, C, D. A trillion different possible arrangements. That just blows me away when I think about it. But that's the way it is. Pretty amazing. That's odds for you, right? That's why, uh, statistically speaking, the chances of getting a multiple choice test right, 20 multiplied by simply guessing, would be one out of a trillion. So not going to happen, right? License plates. Well, how many different possible license plates do we have? And this is when we got to start thinking about uh, other things. So let's let's look at an example here, right? What we have is uh, 162. Mine is 162 NLE, but that's a number, and then it's a letter and a letter and a letter. So we have six stages or six events, right? Or six objects, I guess, but four and three numbers and then three letters. So how many choices do you have for letters, right? Well, or numbers, so it's 10 times 10 times 10 times 26 times 26 times 26. That's how many numbers we have. That's how many letters we have, zero to nine, right? We can't count 10 because that's a mixture of one and zero, right? So. Um, zero to nine gives you 10 numbers, 10 numbers, 10 numbers, 26 letters, 26 letters, 26 letters. So, uh, 10, what do we do here? So 10 times 10 times 10 times 26 times 26 times 26. That gives us 17 million different license plates. Okay. Now the population of Canada is a little bit more. So that's why we have different, uh, style license plates in different, uh, 
in different provinces, right? And you'll know that for trucks, we have some different license plates as well. Now, the, what this assumes here though, this assumes here that you can have the same number twice. So it could be like 444 DDD, right? That would still be part of it. Now, what would happen, say, if we said you're not allowed to repeat numbers and you're not allowed to repeat uh, letters? No repetitions, right? So um, that means that you'd have 10 numbers to choose from in the first one. And since you've already used one, you only have nine left and then eight left for that. You'd have 26 letters that you could choose from to begin with. And then you have to choose 25, one from the remaining 25 and then one from the remaining 24. So um, it's a little bit different, but again, logically it makes some sense, right? So the difference is whether we have repetition or not. Okay, so that's one of the questions that you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself. How about a 649? How about the Lotto 649? Well, Lotto 649 basically means you're not old enough to gamble yet, but doesn't mean you haven't. Uh, it means that you pick six numbers from 0 to 49. Actually, I don't know if they include 0. So maybe it's just 1 to 49, which means 49 numbers, right? From 1 to 49. So how many numbers or how many different possibilities do you have? You have six stages because you're picking six numbers, right? And you have 49 to choose from. So you have 49. Now, in this auto 649, they only have one of each number. So once you've used the number, you can't use it again. So you have one less each time. And this ends up being how many possible um, arrangements of six numbers from one to 49. So these are all the possible uh, possible ones we have. 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44. Uh, and what you have is, look at that, almost again, a trillion different uh, possible arrangements for a 649, which is why it's pretty unlikely that you're going to win, right? Okay, so now let's keep going. Uh, we did repetitions, no repetitions. Let's look at uh, tree diagrams. How can we look at tree diagrams? Well, let's look at the egg situation here, okay? Let's look at the egg situation, just a way to represent these types of situations. So you're having breakfast, right? And the first choice you have are eggs. So what you have is poached, you have scrambled, and you have fried. Okay? Now if you had poached eggs, you're still now, this is your bread, so you have a uh, an option of whole wheat, you have an option of rye, you have an option of white, and you have an option of sourdough. Now realize that you have four of these choices for each of these as well, right? And then um, you have meat. So if you chose uh, poached eggs and whole wheat, then you still have a choice of having bacon or sausage. And if you choose poached eggs and then rye, you still have a choice of uh, bacon or sausage. And at the end here, what you're going to end up having is one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And then off of these, each of these, you're going to have two, right? So you can see that as you go down exponentially, you have more possibilities. And this end bit here uh, is usually what we're looking at. Now, a tree diagram can be written either this way, horizontally, or it can also be written down vertically like this, all right? We will definitely have more experience doing that as um, we progress through this chapter, but let's keep trucking here. So one thing that will be new for you guys is this thing called factorial notation, right? And it simply is this symbol. It is an exclamation mark. And this is the definition. Okay, this is a definition of factorial notation, which basically means that you're multiplying it by everything below it, right? And you stop at one. Because if you multiply by zero, it ends up being zero. So five factorial is just five times four times three times two times one. Now, I'm not quite sure where your calculators are or, or what kind of calculator you have. If I go to math and scroll over to probability, here I have uh, factorial. So what I do is I go five, I go to this thing, and I go 5 factorial, and it's going to give me 120. 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60, times 2 is 120. Boom, there you go. Uh, we're going to be dealing with some equations that have factorial in them, so we're going to have to learn to simplify them and write them out in ways that make a little bit of sense. So 72, hopefully you can see that that's 72 times 71 times 70 uh, all the way down, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here and say, okay, I can stop at 70 factorial. Now I can go to times 69 and call that factorial. I can stop it anywhere because this just means everything below it, right? But why I stopped it there was because I happened to have that same thing on the bottom. 
I happen to have that same thing on the bottom. So this 70 factorial is 70, 69, 68, blah, 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 all the way down to 1. And this is the same thing. So we can actually cancel those out, and you're left with 72 times 71. Okay? Now, uh, we don't always have to have numbers, but uh, we got one more example here where we do have numbers. So let's check this one out. So let's use that concept we had up here. So this will be 37 times 36 times 35. Let's go factorial, right? Minus 35 factorial all over 35 factorial. Now this one's a little bit weird in the sense that I can't just cancel that out because it's not going to work, right? This is all one thing, and that's another. But what you might see is you have a 35 factorial that is indeed common to those, right? So then that becomes 37 times 36, right? Um, minus 1, right? All over 35 factorial. So now those cancel out. And all I have is 37 times 36 minus 1. So uh, 37 times 36, right? And then minus 1, I get 1331. Okay, so these are definitely going to get a little bit trickier, but we can sort them out slowly. Let's have another look. And now we're going to start dealing with uh, variables alone. Okay, so... And plus 1. Well, we know that factorial means you multiply by everything below it. So n plus 1. What's below n plus 1? Just n, right? And then n minus 1 and then n minus 2, dot, 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 dot. Or you could just put a factorial here. Okay? Now this is going to be n minus 1, n minus 2, dot, 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 dot. Or you can just put a factorial there. And then notice that everything below there gets cancelled. The n minus 1 still gets cancelled too, so you could have factorialized it there. And what you're left with is simply n plus 1 times n. You want to multiply it out, be my guest. Okay, have a look at this one here, last one. Let's see if we can sort this out. You actually have an equation now. And what you're trying to do is simplify, find an answer for n. Okay, so we can expand it. n factorial is n times n minus 1, times n minus 2, and I'm just going to go factorial there because that's going to continue on, right? And the reason I stopped there is because I have that on the bottom so I can see that cancels each other out. And this is 3 times 2 times 1. So now you're going to simplify this. You're going to have n squared minus n is equal to 6. Well, this is not anything that you haven't solved before, right? It ends up being a quadratic that you can solve in some way. And you get n is equal to 3 and negative 2. Now, one of these is extraneous. If you thought about it, which one of these numbers will not work, right? What does factorial mean? Well, can I have 3 factorial here? Absolutely. Can I have minus 2 factorial here? No. This is what they call extraneous. If I had minus 2 factorial, that would be minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4 times minus 5. It wouldn't ever end, so it just doesn't work. Your factorials have to be positive, so in this case, n is 3. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that helped. We'll look for our next installment.